education is the bedrock for the development of any society. This informed the decision of government across the globe to establish educational institutions that would foster the development of the countries and environment. To put River State on the first link of development, the Founding Fathers established the River State College of Science and Technology in Bolu Orowaruko in 1972 to develop administrative and technological manpower to drive the economy of the state and its development. And in 1980, the first civilian administration of Chief Milford Obene Okilo transformed the then College of Science and Technology, which was diploma awarding, to a full-fledged University of Science and Technology, the first technological university in Nigeria and the first state university to be situated within the Niger Delta region. The university has seven faculties. They are the Faculty of Agriculture, Engineering, Law, Management Sciences, Environmental Sciences, Technical and Science Education, Sciences, and the proposed College of Medicine. The mandate of the River State University of Science and Technology is to produce scientific and technical manpower of various levels needed for the essential development of River State, and also to produce technical and science teachers for development programs among others. It is the only Nigerian university that offers secretarial administration at degree level. The university has 2,323 teaching and non-teaching staff and a student population of about 15,000. The River State University of Science and Technology is ranked 12th out of 124 universities in Nigeria. The university had eight vice-chancellors since inception with Professor Tena Isun as the pioneer vice-chancellor. The acting vice-chancellor, Professor Blessin Chimeze Didia, is the ninth vice-chancellor of the university. Born on April 20, 1952 at Umugwere Umopi Omerelu in Ikwere local government area of River State, had his primary education at the St. Stephen's State School Omerelu. He had a secondary education at the famous County Grammar School, Ikwiri Eche, and River State College of Science and Technology, where he obtained his advanced school certificate. Professor Didia attended Amadu Bello University, Zaria, between 1974 and 1976, University of Benin, Benin City, between 1976 and 1979, and finally, University of Port Hackett, from 1997 to 2003 where he crowned his educational achievements with a Doctor of Medicine degree with specialization in clinical anatomy and was elected chairman of Equerry Local Government Council under the platform of the defunct National Republican Convention in 1991. He was one time acting head of Department of Human Anatomy, College of Health Science, Dean, Faculty of Basic Sciences and Provost, College of Medical Sciences, all in the University of Port Hackett. Professor Blessing Chimizi Didier was appointed acting vice chancellor of the River State University of Science and Technology in Bolu Orowaruko Port Hackett on 31st July 2015 by Governor Nyesum Izinwonwike and assumed duties on 3rd August 2015 at the expiration of the tenure of the former vice chancellor Professor B. B. Fakai with the mandate to revitalize and prioritize activities of the university in line with the vision of the Founding Fathers. The Founding Fathers had a mind to have a rest of science and technology that will solve the problems and is involved in our kind of terrain. And uh, that's why they call it in of science and technology. It's supposed to be the best in teaching, innovation and uh, creativity and uh, it is my hope that one day this university will be renowned as a place of learning it will be reckoned as a place of excellence and that technological innovation should be imagined from this particular place that is my feeling for this university and uh, it is achievable uh, but when i came it's like they were watching out to see what i will do and uh, I didn't meet very happy people on ground. I didn't meet very happy people. 
the workforce was down in morale and everything, and that way they must be a way to remove these long faces and turn them into something else. So I embarked on proper meeting with them and found out all their problems. And I can tell you, even as I sit here now, that those problems seem to have been surmounted. Everybody who talked to the U.S. now is very happy and working together. This mandate of Governor Wiki to the acting vice chancellor has been surpassed as evidence in the university community. Already, uh, the peace most of us yearned to have in the last administration has returned fully. People are now working with happiness. We are going to classrooms with happiness. And this translates into what we are doing uh, with the students. The students are happy. So if I should tell you the truth, people are happy. Staff are happy. And we are getting on very well. As I speak, the Vice Chancellor actually approved the payment of 5.6 million to acquire what we, uh, electronic uh, database we call eBrary and ProQuest. The eBrary covers over 900,000 books, current books, covering all the disciplines, all the subjects. At the click of a button, you have your book. ProQuest has over 400,000 titles of articles covering all the disciplines. Another important major legacy of the present administration in this faculty is the setting up of the first ever digital language center in the Department of Mass Communication with about 32 systems for students. There is, there is a, a sense of communality, there is a sense of community, there is a sense of togetherness. The element of estrangement, the element of uh, trying to survive the vagaries of the system um, has been replaced by a sincere commitment and involvement by every member of the university community. Virtually all faculties of the River State University of Science and Technology was confronted with a number of challenges before the assumption of duties of the present acting vice chancellor who took pragmatic steps and with human face administration has overcome them thereby raising confidence in teaching and non-teaching staff of the institution. And the first complaint I gave to him was that, sir, faculty of agriculture is the oldest agri faculty here. Yet, we do not have um, a faculty conference room. We do not even have a dean's office. And he said, ah, is that so? Uh, that he will do something about it. And within three weeks, where I am sitting now, here, is the new dean's office that he gave to us. We didn't have any. If I open the other door there now, you see the old conference room of the VC, he has given to us, even though we are sharing with faculty of technical and science education. But now we have a conference room. That was the first uh, surprise package that Prof. Didier gave to us. Secondly, he's a down-to-earth person. He listens to people. We interact with him at committee levels. At Senate, he listens to people. And uh, that is the team spirit that we like. So I believe that by the grace of God, under his regime, we shall experience tremendous changes in this university. Uh, he has also been supportive in other ways, promoting postgraduate school staff as at when due, and also approving the payment of honoraria for external examiners very promptly. And also, when we need some financial uh, assistance to do things in PG school, he hasn't hesitated. Uh, he has readily approved for us. So all in all, PG school has benefited a lot. Generally, he has been very helpful and cooperative. We lack offices and um, we told him that one of the things he can do for us is that we have some spaces that can be partitioned into offices and he agreed to carry that out immediately and uh, we did um, apply afterwards and then um, he approved monies for that and we were able to create nine offices um, with, with that. And um, other aspects we told him we are um, aspects of 
um, an insufficient lecturer, especially in the new petroleum engineering department, which he is doing everything possible to recruit um, new staff, especially at the doctoral and professoral levels. If the bachelor does not uh, make impact in one day, it will be shown and known everywhere. Yes. If people get into their houses and they don't have water to drink, uh, they don't have electricity, it will be known immediately. The bachelor's law, the moment he took over work as the person in charge of the university, has sustained work. We have gone to him several times and tell him, our challenges come very, very often. Ah, uh, we have such a challenge, oh, the other one has failed, the other one problem here. And the bachelor's law has always backed us up supported us, who works through this. I remember a situation where there was one of friends where he said, don't wait. You don't want these bad people to enter into this university. He's made very tremendous effort in the university to sustain and keep it. It's very challenging to run a university. To do it for one month or two months, three months, we can tell you that. I can tell you that personally, as somebody who works with him directly, that he has done very well. As part of measures to restore the lost glory of the university, Professor Didier has commenced the restoration of decay infrastructure and improvement of existing facilities after due consultation with all relevant stakeholders. Monies were put, paid directly into the accounts of heads of departments and deans. To me, that is important because we, we are made to take responsibility of our own uh, whatever we are doing. For the past years, we've not seen this type of thing in the mathematics department. All of a sudden, he came on board and tried to put all these things in place for us to know what we are studying. Well, I would say there are a lot of changes like renovation, the rooms, as in they've worked on the hostel and it's looking more beautiful than the last section. Um, when I went to the, uh, the hostel side, what they have put in place, the facility and everything, I think the governor made the right choice. Professor Blessing Didier also met with the various unions and associations in the university on the way forward and to create conducive environments devoid of rancor and acrimony. The institution's only relaxation center, the Senior Staff Club, which is closed down by the former Vice Chancellor, Professor Fakai, has been reopened, renovated, and expanded with additional facilities for recreation. So, my relationship has been very, very simple with all of them. Um, I found certain things that are not proper when the lecturers have their ass in the and if students now fight the lecturers, you will polarize the school. So, that happened mistakenly. And, uh, in the process, they broke down the ass of the head, spoiled it, got it spoiled. And I felt that they attend meetings, they do their things. So we've been able to replace their bus for them, put them on another bus. We've also bought another bus for Nasu. Sanu has a car that they're using for the moment. So for that, the unions are quite happy with it. And uh, they were been old some amount of money areas and so on. And we've forwarded this to the government for approval. And one of them, I know the governor has said that they should pay interim installments. And as I came back, I showed them the money from the governor. Made the federal government left to them. When they made that kind of open door policy, they know where you have reached. But they will hide anything from anybody. Nobody will come and fight for you. With what is going on, because we never had it like this in the past three years. This place was locked up by those who, or by the power that be, then. As soon as the new vice chancellor came, he has reactivated the club, and now there is a new rock construction taking place in the club to give us a befitting staff club, which has never been before. A new complex is being built for the institution of pollution studies and laboratories to create more offices and conducive environment for effective research work. The acting vice chancellor. Professor Blessing Didier, as part of efforts to restore sanity to the school, organized a peace and reconciliation thanksgiving service at the Chapel of Redemption to seek the face of God for sustainable peace 
to reconcile all aggrieved parties and to guarantee a conducive environment for academic excellence. <laughs> The ability of the acting vice chancellor to relate with the workforce, irrespective of status and their determination, to ensure that staff of the institution had their rights and privileges endeared him to the university community. Professor Didier abolished all obnoxious promotion policies that created stagnation among the workforce and lifted the embargo on unionism in the campus and presented a Toyota Human bus to Nansu for their activities, while two other vehicles were procured for the library and consultancy services unit. As our new acting vice chancellor came, he has brought everybody together. There is no factionalism in, in Roost as far as ASU is concerned. The acting vice chancellor has done a lot of good things to us as a body. Our union vehicle that was destroyed has been replaced by this acting vice chancellor. We have also, for the first time in the history of UST, have been given a befitting secretary where we can call our own. Now, before he came also, there were many staff members of the university whose salaries were either completely seized for some years or were half of their salaries paid to them over years. The vice chancellor in his magnanimity has ordered for release of the bad log of um, areas for these uh, workers affected. The very